have you ever asked yourself the question, why is gold valuable? Why is silver, that's sound money, gold and silver, why is it valuable to begin with, right? Why not a magnesium rod or a magnesium coin or a calcium coin? I'm a mother with minerals guy, right? I make mineral supplements. So I deal in pure, whether it's calcium or zinc or, or whatever, copper, what makes the you know, it's still a mineral from the earth what makes right. gold gold valuable i'm gonna ask the ask that question for your listeners today on a very special episode of coffee with lynette i have a returning guest dr alma true ott now dr ott was in wall street in 1984 and he was trained in derivatives, futures, mutual funds, all of this stuff. But he had an experience with Paul Volcker as we were making this transition from a, at least a quasi gold backed system into the debt based system that we're in today. I hope you get as much out of this as I did. Dr. Ott, thank you so much for coming. There's so much going on in the world today. And the first thing I want to ask you is, do you see with your experience back at the last transition from a gold back or at least a quasi gold back currency to a debt based currency, do you see parallels in what's happening today? Well, absolutely. Yes. And thanks for having me, Lynette. I'm a big fan of what you're doing. You're, you're, you're right on top of so much. And then thank, thank you for your work. I got to say that up front. Yes. Absolutely. As you see the transition from money as defined by, you know, just the, just the definition, sound money versus fiat money, fiat currency. What is money, you see? And if you don't have that basis, what do you really have? You ultimately descend into tyranny and anarchy. Right. So what is money for viewers that maybe didn't see our first video or you know, because it's not something that they teach you in school, is it? Well, absolutely not. And <laughs> yeah, that's what's so funny. In fact, uh, the the school education is a whole other topic for another discussion. How it's just kind of kind of de debased as much as our our phony currency has been debased. People aren't even getting the idea of what is economic theory, what is uh, the economy, what is it based on. And it's a fact, Lynette, and you can verify this with all of your research and your, your, your training. If you go to a complete fiat type of, of, of free for all, you know, like your, your money gun that you show, right. okay, for, for it's a, <laughs> there it is. It's a recipe for prosperity in a big way for a short term. Right. It's going to make people feel like, Wow, the merchants of the earth rule, the Bill Gates of the world, world rule, the the Mark Zuckerbergs, et cetera, et cetera, the Jeff Bezos. They rule, but under what basis? It's it's all a mirage. Yeah. It's all fiction. Yeah. So because you can't that, you can only create the semblance of wealth with debt until you have to really repay that debt, which is what the monetary system's based on. Exactly. There's always, you're going to have to pay the piper sometime. Do you and think that that's now? It has to be. It has, it's, it's, it, 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 I thought it was that way in 2008, frankly. I thought that with the unraveling of the, I thought that the domino would fall with the subprime mortgage failing. Okay. And I thought, mm -hmm in my opinion, uh, that that would lead to the derivative bubble to burst. And I think uh, I was preparing back in 2008 uh, to go back to basics and go back to sound money. Uh, to that end, I, I began trying to, to build a um, 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 secure base myself and have others join in. As, as, and that's, I guess, you can know what I'm talking about with that, right. going back to to, to have sound money based on sound principles, right? Well, governments, you know, have a tendency not to like to do that because that puts restrictions around their spending and their wealth transfer, right? Exactly, exactly. I was um, 
fortunate enough to receive a scholarship back to Wall Street. This is back in 1980 something. I'm not so sure of the exact date. Okay. But at the end of that six week um, uh, training session in Wall Street, we were we were at the at the uh, uh, Marquis Marriott on Broadway, I mean, top of the I mean top of the food chain. We we had uh, the the final uh, speaker that came to address us was Paul Volcker, Chairman of the Federal Reserve, and in a nutshell, he he basically blew my mind, frankly, because here I. I've been trained on how to how to do mutual funds, how to how to do FX trading and the whole nine yards, how to make millions, really. But at the end of the day, here's Volker telling me it doesn't matter. This is all paper. He, he has said you until you put it into gold, you have nothing. Right. And his whole whole message was giving us connections to buy the whether it's Krugerrands or Maple Leafs or whatever uh in the in the mint mint series editions and having them put offshore and that just was so what i spent six weeks learning how to do mutual funds and how to analyze stocks and bonds and and all of that when in the at the end of the day he's telling me this is all paper and doesn't matter you take and he actually used the term goy uh this is for the consumption of the goy not for you now what is that? I had no, it was not part of my vernacular, but I learned what it meant, and so I just said, "Well, okay, um, good advice." But I honestly thought, Lynette, that Chairman Volcker was a little bit old and eccentric and didn't wasn't with the times. Yeah. Okay. Nice bit of advice, but he doesn't know what we know. You know, isn't this that time basic? is different, right? Yeah. This time yeah. is different. Yeah, it was like get with the times, you old fogey type of thing. That's in the, that's what I thought in my in my my selfish pride. Okay, but looking back, the old you know you always hear the term that hindsight is twenty twenty. Yep. Well, absolutely. I look back if I had followed his advice and put all of my holdings into precious gold offshore, I would be multi, multi-millionaire right now today. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Instead, I thought I knew better and played the paper game and took a big bath in 2008. I was heavy into subprimes and because that's where the big, the low hanging fruit is, the big money was there. Right. So, yeah. He was right then, and frankly, Lynette, you're right now. Okay, oh. the whole message is sound money. It is. It's it's the only thing that matters. Well, it's when the I'll, only thing that lasts for centuries, right? Yeah. Nothing else really lasts that long. The, the fiat, the paper money, the money that takes no effort to create, <laughs> right? It takes no effort to create this, and guess what? It costs as much to create a $1 bill as it does a $100 bill. Or a $100,000 bill as he <laughs> as he, he went in and actually burned it to light a cigar with. Exactly. But I want to take you back to 2008 um, because like you, I also, and there was no doubt in my mind that the system died. And then they used this little trick of mm -hmm. dropping interest rates to zero or at least for corporations and banks, uh, and printing a whole lot of free money to make it appear that the system was still okay and they had fixed the problem. But in my opinion, and I want to ask your opinion on this, all they did was paper over it to buy them time to get the next system in place. The CBDCs. Absolutely 100% concur with that. 100%. Call it in quantitative easing, one, two, three, four. It's just flooding paper. That's all it is. It's it's the equivalent of putting a Band-Aid uh, on, a, on a pulsating wound of, of an artery, okay? It may look like it's okay, but it's bleeding the people dry. And... Uh that's what's happened uh we face that now so 
there's in looking at historic historicity uh going back into it and the fiat money exchange the thing that really makes fiat work historically for at least for a time being at the transition phase is war thank you that was one of the things that i also wanted to bring up go ahead keep going yeah so we see that the the world is shaping up just this much like it did in the 1930s uh, before world war ii the gentleman named albert pike wrote a letter to giuseppe mazzini it was it this was well documented it was in the british museum the series of, of letters and albert pike outlined the the three major world wars and how it would unfold and why the third world war would be the the to fight the world into utter exhaustion making it uh, such a a terrible cataclysm that everybody would just roll over and do whatever the power brokers wanted which is really what we're talking about here an elite elite few that have sold out um their birthright i i agree with that a hundred percent because if you're dependent upon this crap you know yeah. then then when that when they take that away when it, it has no purchasing power value it's just the confidence that keeps it in circulation and people still willing to work with it. And when they created this scheme, they knew that people marry the legal money of the state. So it's been pretty easy and they don't tell you what money is. They, they don't teach that they should teach that in grade school, but then nobody would cooperate. <laughs> and, you know, we are watching because I, I do have to make, um, this comment on the war between Hamas and Israel, what's going on there, it's it's horrendous. But I do also look at, you know, the war between Russia and U- Ukraine as well. And war is something that always accompanies these currency regime shifts because it distracts you and it also justifies, right? So now Absolutely. I'm reading, yeah, I'm, I'm reading headlines and saying, oh, well, this war will tip the world into recession. The world is already in or headed toward recession with the bond bubble, with that debt bubble that they began to create back in the 70s and ramped up pushing interest rates to zero and now rapidly spiking them. So can you comment on your feeling on where we are in that debt bubble popping because basically like Mohammed El Arian the other day said, treasury bonds, which are the foundation of the global system have lost all anchors. So can, can you comment on that? I go back to what Volcker said and I quote, it may not happen in my lifetime. He said, quote, I'll never forget this because it just, it just seared in my conscience. He said, but it probably will happen in your lifetime when this, he held up another hundred thousand dollar note. Yeah. Will be no more valuable than this. And he has held up a George Washington $1 bill. Now I thought a lot about that on my flight home back to Utah. What is, how could that be? What would make that happen? where a hundred thousand dollar note would be just the same paper as a one dollar bill well think about it it has to be a a, an orchestrated system of cataclysms to make people totally give up that system well and and inflation yeah i mean inflation and hyperinflation is built into this system so they can rob you without you being aware of who's really orchestrating this yeah, just like Zimbabwe. I mean, very, very mineral rich uh, country in Africa. Uh, I have here on my desk a, a $1 trillion Zimbabwe note, a Zim, Zim, Zim note, right? It, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you have- I mean, here's a whole bunch of them, including a gold certificate and a silver certificate. Again, it goes back to paper. You can't print it fast enough. And it goes, you know, the story of, of the German mark, right, at the, uh, after, in the 1920s, people having to be paid twice a day to get to the get the, the store and buy their bread and their bratwurst, right? Because it was so hyperinflationary of, of 
a loaf of bread would cost a wheelbarrow full of marks, right? Right. One thing about gold and silver, it's finite. Yep. You cannot go make gold. Right. You can't have a have a gold machine. <laughs> okay. You know, you can look at the reported gold stores, and I've gone in and and read all the early days of the Federal Reserve and this transfer, um, but it was also changing what backed the current currency that enabled them to create a whole lot more that could then be set up to be debased. But in war, a lot of the gold from Europe came to the U.S. That's, yeah, and that's what the Bretton Woods Agreement and all that uh, before the World War was even concluded. It, it set up the American U.S. Federal Reserve note as a reserve currency, and you're right. So there's a lot of it's a lot of transfer of the real wealth, right? But then you see uh, in testimony with Ron Paul, uh, with the Federal Reserve Chair, just a few years ago, they said we don't own any gold. The Federal Reserve has no gold reserves, whether that was lying under oath or whatever. But I think it was it's been transferred out. Oh, and it's been turned into derivatives. I mean, leasing. I don't care what they say. Nobody really knows how much gold the U.S. owns. And they can say, any, or any any other place for that matter, you think we're really getting any kind of honest you, accounting? Going back to, to my <laughs> night, yeah, my event there in New York City was part of our, our key to the city type of thing. We were given a full uh, basement to the top of the, of the Twin Towers tour of the World Trade Centers. And, uh, you know, little little bit of information at the base of the World Trade Center there was this massive repository of precious metals, primarily gold. We were taken down there and just shown the vault. Of course, we weren't able to go in there and physically see the gold. But I tell you, there was a massive amount there. Uh, makes me wonder what happened to that when the when the Twin Towers collapsed. Was it moved out before uh, or was it salvaged afterwards? Who knows? Who knows? Nobody, it was ground zero. Nobody got in there. Right. right? You're not going to know. Oh. And you and the other part is, and I, I see a parallel with this too, is you may have seen a massive amount of gold, but who was the real owner of that gold, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Who was the real owner of that gold? And so today, if you hold everything on your cell phone, it's really easy to transfer because that's what they want. They want all titles. I mean, this is, this is what they say. I, I don't... You know, I don't pretend to know any more than what I can research and read and, and give an opinion. But you hold all your titles on that phone and they employ the most brilliant minds in psychology and psychiatry to manage how you perceive things so that those that manage to accumulate any equity in their assets, it's easily spent. Right? Yeah. We're consumer driven. It's exactly. easily spent. And then who are you going to blame? I mean, I've seen so many, you know, like mom and pop owners that end up going bankrupt. I mean, look at what just happened recently through, you know, 2020 and beyond to the mom and pops, the middle class of the world. And that's really started back in 2000, but they've been absolutely decimated so that all that wealth transfer and business transferred to the top and the mom and pops are gone or they're first or they're first to forced to work for the top like Amazon right so that's by design I had I did a series of interviews on my my uh, show Lynette with a guy named John D'Souza now mm -hmm. I want you to remember that name and this is what what uh, uh, the basic message of John D'Souza is: America, you better wake up, or we won't have an America. Right. I mean, that's the bottom line here. Do we want a safe haven for our, or our posterity, for our kids and grandkids and great grandkids? Yeah. We better wake up. And. <laughs> Is it too late? I hope not. I, you know, the guy I, I, I don't think it is. I don't think yeah. it is. 
look at why have you ever asked yourself the question why is gold valuable why is silver as sound money gold and silver why is it valuable to begin with right why not a magnesium rod or a magnesium coin or a calcium coin i'm a mother with minerals guy right i make mineral supplements so i deal in pure whether it's calcium or zinc or or whatever copper what makes the you know, it's still a mineral from the earth what makes right. gold gold valuable i'm gonna ask the ask that question for your listeners to ponder on think about it first of all it's limited right and you can you can't manufacture any of the elements synthetically you can refine them you can go and dig them out of the earth and refine them and purify them make them 24 karat gold and then you can stamp them with the coins and they're valuable and that what makes them valuable i submit is because of the the hebrew word for gold is the word zahab zahab there's a lot in the words of of what the hebrews named the substance okay gold doesn't rust doesn't i mean it just always shimmers and shines it's basically eternal mm -hmm. right it you can melt it and turn it into liquid but then it hardens and it's just it is it is universal that's why it makes us makes us such a beautiful thing and mm -hmm. the fact that they have never been able to duplicate the qualities in either gold or silver in a lab and that it is used globally across every single sector of the global economy i mean you know as the anchor as the anchor as yeah. the exactly and look at what the central banks are doing on a global basis you know we talked about how much gold there is that you saw in the uh, in the twin towers in the basement when you went on that tour but again who owns it really and how many derivatives, how many Wall Street tools are derived from that and then just put out there? 2008 died. You were right. It was a derivative implosion. It was the second one after long-term capital management back in, what, 98. So we've got a third one that has to be exploding right now because so much of the derivatives these speculative bets which is how the banks are making their money and oh by the way bank of america definitely came out and said they don't expect to lose anything on their held to maturity bonds right <laughs> the treasuries yeah. where it should be obvious and, I, I and maybe it it's what do you call it call it hell to maturity not held <laughs> I, I think I think you're right, but hey, how stable is it? Because a trillion times zero is zero. So if you hold a trillion dollars and you can't convert it into any goods and services that you need, what's mm -hmm. it worth? Going back to Zimbabwe, I mean, the, or the Venezuela, ink paper, perhaps ink and the paper on it is all that's that's value. Again, going back to what Zol what Volker told me, right? It's going to come. And the reason why he said that, Lynette, is because he was debriefed on that. He knows the, knows the mm -hmm. whole plan by the bankster masters. Mm -hmm. Okay. He knows it's coming. He just couldn't tell you exactly when. So we see that's well, where it's worth heading. So right. <laughs> these things can't happen quickly where people notice. It's the frog in the pot of water that these things happen slowly enough that the sickness becomes your norm. So the inflation becomes your norm and, and you don't remember it, but you and I are of the same age category. And I remember quite clearly when inflation was a bad word as we were transitioning into the new system. So I want to take us full circle because we're running out of time. Oh, and, wow. and I, you know, and I want your final words on what you see happening today that you saw happening 
back in the 70s and the 80s when they were taking us into, turning us into debt slaves and where they're going to take us, in your opinion, with the CBDCs. Right. Yeah. When uh, Lyndon ben, LBJ, after the death of, of Kennedy, first thing he signed into executive order, into law, was to basically debauch the currency into the, into the clad coins. He basically cut, the, cut the, the anchor rope to the balloon. And we've been free floating ever since. That was, to me, an act of high treason. Absolutely. Because the 1793 Coinage Act had not been revoked. It was still in force. And right. read that carefully, ladies and gentlemen. The 1793 Coinage Act said you, you debauch the currency, you are guilty of a felony, which is death. It's a death sentence. There was no messing around with people that debauched the currency uh, up until LBJ. Right. And then he even came out and said that anybody that attempts to accumulate the silver that, yeah. that our government, I mean, it's in the history. You could go to the whitehouse.gov and you can see where he tells people that they will manipulate the price of silver to destroy anybody that tries to accumulate it. Yes. And so this is absolutely not by design. And, and you look at what happened in, uh, with, with JFK leading up to his demise, he was making war, literally, him and Bobby both, against these Federal Reserve banksters. He had, he had ordered the silver certificate, the $2 bill coming out. He had ordered the Treasury to start uh, backing the currency with silver again. Uh, and he'd been ordered not to do that. He was ordered to, to debauch the currency, to get the free fall happening. He said no. This is what he, he he spoke at Columbia University about this. Remember, he says there's a there's this massive conspiracy that I will not be a part of. Remember that I'm, I'm mm -hmm. paraphrasing what he actually said. And and a dark day for America, frankly, when he was assassinated, and the LBJ uh, brought in the the debauched currency. It was we that's our downward slope, in my opinion, since then. But what is kesef? What does that mean in the Hebrew? Uh, it literally means liberty. It means there was, it's jubilee. Uh, at, maybe people don't understand this, but in the Hebrew tradition, every seven years was a uh, year of jubilee, okay? That you, all debts were forgiven, all usury, all debts started from scratch, okay? And the basis of this was the liberty silver coinage that they were using the shekels. That has to happen in America. And I mean, what is the national debt for heaven's sakes? God. It's a piece of paper that means nothing because it's based on statutory fraud. Right, and the ability to do that. Yeah. Constructive I mean, fraud. <laughs> we never voted this in. There was nothing that said we had to, to bind our whole lives and our future and our, our posterity to a bunch of, of paper contracts. Right. We weren't given that choice. We the people weren't, Lynette. Exactly. So let's declare a year of jubilee. What would happen if 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 they called a war and nobody showed up? Yeah, wouldn't that be interesting? And what would happen if they introduced CBDCs and nobody used them? <laughs> exactly. And and there are people in Congress that are fighting the CBC CBDC takeover. But and it goes states. Back to the point that I really want to stress is the freedom part, because they are doing everything and have been doing everything to reduce and reduce and reduce our freedoms and going into a full surveillance currency where they can dictate what you can buy, how much of it you can buy, how long it has any value to buy anything at all, right? To yeah. reduce by making, forcing you to deposit your paychecks into the bank where immediately they have a, their finger on the button to negative interest rates because they've already removed all the purchasing power value from this stuff, mm -hmm. right? That's not true with this stuff. This stuff retains its purchasing power value and it'll retain your freedom. Your freedom is everything and you need food, water, energy, security, 
barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter to survive what they have and, 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 and really retain your freedom, retain your choices. Your autonomy, which is really what it's Thank all you. about. Yes, At it is. Yeah, your choices of what, and more importantly, what you do with your own body. Oh, okay? yeah. Have, I mean, legally, we have no we have no right over our mind. We have to impart our experience and our knowledge and our wisdom because these generations have grown up with the electronics and they and the giving up their privacy and giving up their choices. And they don't know the difference because they haven't lived through it. But we have. So uh, Dr. Ott, you and I have the most important job and in, in anybody in our generation to help this other generation retain their freedom and the rights over their own bodies and the rights over their own brains and those generations to come. We have the, we have the big job, no doubt about it. And I agree, I'm just getting started too. Uh, yeah. For me, if, if for people, if they want to retain their freedom, not, I mean, you and I were old, we've got the third of our lives, but our kids, our grandkids, our great grandkids, that's who I'm fighting for. And when you ask, well, how do you do it? You do it by being as self-sufficient and independent so that you don't need their fiat, right? Let me, let me leave something with you uh, as we kind of were ending, to, ending time. My doctoral dissertation uh, that started my company, Mother Earth Minerals, I was a student of Dr. Linus Pauling. In 1948, he wrote, he authored a paper and he won two Nobel Prizes in his life, right? Dr. Pauling's paper was called Resonance. My doctoral dissertation under his tutelage was called Harmonic Resonance, what, in which I, 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 I bring out a postulation that give me the atomic weight of anything on the periodic table or any known element, and it, and it has a resonant frequency. That's what makes yes. it work, okay? We know what we see what's happened with, with gold metal detectors. This, the electronics can speculate, oh, this is actual gold versus ferrous iron, right? Right. It's the frequency that it's pulsing, and the electronics are allow, allowed to do that. My point is, there is a specific frequency of gold that I mapped, and I've, I've written this in, in a book form and papers, okay? Using measuring that harmonic frequency of 24 karat pure gold. And it's resonant frequency. And you go and take an EEG measurement of a mother's love for her child. That love frequency matches the gold frequency. Wow, I did not know that. That is so That's interesting. I, wow. yes. So it is actually the love of God that rules the world. Because love of a creator to his, to us, his crea creations is what gives us that freedom, okay? He loves us enough to let us be free, to make our own bump our head, bump our head against the wall. We learn from that. That's how we learn. We're free to make the mistakes mm -hmm. and to go forward and be better and more in the refiner's finer return to him. See, that's what it's, when I talk about spirituality, that's what we're talking about. But gold is that frequency matching what I see and think is the most powerful force in the universe, a mother's inherent love for her child. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you can see it in nature. Um, mothers that have uh, something ab about a mother that truly loves a child, they, they get almost superhuman strength to protect that child. There's no more dangerous animal in the world than a cow moose that's separated from a cat. Right. That cow moose will kick your butt 10 times from Sunday and stomp you to the ground to your dust. Yep. That's the power of love, and it matches the frequency of gold. Just want to say that. So, and, and leaving this, you know, where do we get the tradition of putting a gold wedding band on our ring finger? And it happens to think that frequency goes into the to the artery, going directly to the carotid artery to your heart. Isn't that interesting? 
it's a it's a frequency measurement of love that you have a commitment to a, a significant other a spouse and you commit to have that for better or for worse till death do you part and that's what binds you that's the energy field that binds you it's a covenant between you and your spouse and your creator that's what the wedding thing is all about <laughs> yeah and and that's that's how we battle it see that's our battle that we have to face we you and i and everybody that has ears to hear sound money is the answer it was the answer five thousand years ago it's the answer five thousand years in the future and yes. don't let these evil ones take that away from you that knowledge of what zahab gold and kasaf silver means love and liberty you with me yeah love and liberty love i am totally and liberty. I have what totally else is there that. <laughs> exactly that's everything and i do know what a mother's love is because this is this has been my battle really my whole life and you know i'm i'm not particularly religious but i am extremely spiritual and i, I have that. felt yeah. guided my entire life one at a time one one person at a time makes a difference so i, I told you we're kindred spirits yep. right and this because listen and this is what i want, want to leave with the last the last words okay. if I could. religion divides people by design it divides people mm -hmm. spirituality unites people that's a truism wow. <laughs> that's a doctor true goosebumps you've given me goosebumps a few times during this interview dr i goosebumps are a sign of spirituality connection to source lynette and mm -hmm. spirituality unites religions divide no matter what it is and it's time to put there's a favorite song that i helped uh, pin up uh in in finding who you are you give up all your religions you give up your religions to find the one true god and that means a relationship with him a love a zahab a connection, a covenant. And once you do that, what matters? What else matters in this world? Because, you know, we're all going to, I don't know anybody that get out, gets out of this world alive, okay? Right. You're going to pass away and you're going to move along. But what you leave for others is is what you're going to be judged with, period. Right. That's your legacy. That's so. right. And we have a choice. And I think too, in that spirituality piece, I mean, there there are definitely more of us than there are of them that oh, want to control us. Yes. So if we come together in community, which I really realize that's the real message for me out here is, is building this community and coming together, then we can retain that our choices, we can retain our liberties and our freedoms and our love, we we can retain that. Yes, I have a lot of hope. I, I'm not just going to go. Oh well, they're going to do this, and I'm just going to comply because I don't have any choice. Yes, we have choices. Let's make those choices while we can. Doctor Ott, to, thank to you. To coin another last last term, <laughs> okay. uh, field of dreams. Right, mm -hmm. you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. You build it, they will come. People know there's a problem, Lynette. Yes, the they do. The hearted people of whether, whether you're Democrat or Republican or independent, right. political parties are like religion. They divide people. They don't need yes. to be. We need we, we to be under, under one human flesh. Okay. We are building something that is the basis foundation. You build this, they will come. They don't know why or where, but when this thing hits the fan in a big way, it's just going to do. We have to have a building that they will come to and flock to. Does that make sense? That makes all the sense in the world. Okay, all dear. the sense in the world. Thanks thank for you your time so for having much. me. Oh, thank you so much for being here today. I've gotten a lot of goosebumps, like I said. And, <laughs> you know, for everybody that's watching, all of the links to Dr. Ott and your books and all of that, will be below. This is a plan and we have our own plan. And you protect yourself with gold and silver, as well as food, water, energy, security, barterability, although 
anything physical and any talent you have is also barterable. Wealth preservation, community, arguably the most important part of anything that I ever talk about because we need to come together to say no. We have a choice. We can say no. Yes. And come shelter. Forward. These are the things that we need. So please, Absolutely. people, take heed, get it done, and please, till next we meet, be safe out there. Bye-bye.